In today's video, I'm going to be focusing on just one single raw material, and this raw material, which is called Veramos, also known as Evanil, is really useful. I think any beginner perfumer should have it. It's widely used by perfumers, and it's commonly used as a fixative. It lasts a really long time, and it also smells pretty nice on its own. So stay tuned to find out all about Evanil or Veramos. This video is sponsored by Luxeterra, my online store where you can find all of the essential equipment for perfumery. Only good quality and good value for money products make the cut and I use almost all of the products myself when making perfumes for my brand. To browse the full range of products, visit www.lux-terra.co.uk or click the link in the description. So, like I said, this raw material has two names. One of its names is Evanil, and to be honest, this makes a lot of sense because it just lasts such a long time, hence Evanil, a bit like Everlasting. And Veramos, its other name, also makes sense because it's actually found naturally in oak moss. If you don't know what oak moss is, it's a lichen that's commonly found on oak trees throughout Europe and some of North America, and this stuff has been extracted and used in perfumery for ages. And this used to be used a lot, especially in traditional fougere and sheep perfumes, However, more recently, it was actually discovered that something inside of it, atronol, and another thing called chloroatronol, are very allergenic. In fact, these two things contribute to about 20% of all fragrance allergies. As such, the IFRA, the International Fragrance Regulatory Association, they've actually gone and restricted it. So you can now only go and use 0.1% of this oak moss in your final perfume. However, this Veramos is unrestricted. And Veramos, it turns out, is actually not only naturally found in oak moss, but it's commonly accepted that Veramos is the uh, principal odor component. Essentially, it's the single molecule which contributes the most to the actual smell of that natural. So if you were gonna pick any one uh, aroma chemical to go and replace oak moss, then this would be the one. Now, Evanil is actually a solid powder. So if you go and buy some 100% pure Evanil, don't be surprised to just get a big box of powder. If you wanna make it into a liquid, then you have to go and dilute it with something else like perfume as alcohol. In order to do that, you'll need a spatula and a scale. So if you don't already have one of those or you don't know how to make dilutions, then do check out my video on how to make dilutions for perfumery. Anyway, that fact that it's a solid isn't all bad. Actually, the fact that it's a solid is part of the reason that it lasts so long and that it acts as a fixative. One way you can imagine it is kind of as if this part of the raw material, when it's on your skin, because it's more like a solid than a liquid, you can imagine it, uh, say, evaporates a bit less quickly. So basically, you can imagine it as pulling the other components in your perfume down and sticking them to your skin just that little bit longer. Anyway, like I already said, Oak moss itself used to be used quite widely in chypres and fougeres. These are two of the main traditional genres of perfume. That probably is part of the reason as well that perfumes containing oak moss and also by extension veramos do have a little bit of a traditional smell to them, I find, at least if you use quite a high dose. But anyway, since oak moss has been quite restricted, in more modern perfumery, often a lot of veramos is used instead of the oak moss. And veramos itself actually smells quite a lot cleaner, at least to my nose, than the oak moss, which has more kind of deep, dark, kind of dirty facets to it. Now, as far as it's actually used in perfumes on the market, well, it's so common and widespread that pretty much you will find it just about anywhere. However, some examples are Chanel No. 19, uh, Polo by Ralph Lauren, and also Cool Water by Davidoff. Now, one perfume which is famous for using an overdose of this Evanil is Baccarat Rouge, which is a very popular niche perfume at the moment. And if you go and look at the GCMS, that's the kind of analytical or a lab's interpretation of what is inside that perfume, you'll find that it looks like about 10% of that formula, 10% of the perfume is just made of Evanil, which is really a higher amount given how strong and powerful this raw material can be. So enough of that, why don't we actually go and smell it for itself? So I've got a bottle right here of Veramos at 10% dilution in alcohol. Now, one thing I will note is because this is very much a base note, and I say it lasts a long time, it literally lasts for months and months on the scent strip, probably one of the most long lasting raw materials that I know of, only a few other musks and potentially a couple of other things last that long. But because it's a base note, we won't necessarily be able to smell too much straight away on the scent strip. So what I'll do is I'll leave this and I'll come back in five minutes and then I'll let you know what it smells like. 
Anyway, so it's been five minutes and now I'm back and the ethanol has mostly evaporated from this scent strip, which means I should now be able to smell it quite a bit better. So if we go and smell it, so I really do actually quite like this smell and it's probably one of my more um, preferred base notes in perfumery, at least how it smells on its own. And when you smell it on its own, I think it's got, well, to me, what it smells of is this kind of, I would say it's a bit of a like kind of magical forest kind of smell. I don't know if that's just partially a connection that I've made due to it uh, being called vera moss and found in oak moss, that kind of thing. Um, but I do think it has this quite unique kind of, I would say a fuzzy smell to it. But it's also got a sweetness to it. It's like a kind of fuzzy, mossy sweetness. It's something that's really different, but to me, it's just very inviting and kind of quite a comforting kind of smell. Now, what I will say is that when you go and start putting this into perfumes, unfortunately, at least from my perspective, it doesn't seem to hold on to its same uh, kind of, let's say, magical forest smell. Um, it seems to often make the perfumes veer much more towards kind of traditional powdery uh, barbershop perfumes, that kind of thing. And I guess that does make sense since it's found in the oak moss and that was traditionally used in all of those fougeres and chypres, which are associated with, you know, a traditional kind of barbershop fragrance, that kind of thing. So it does make sense. Now, one thing that I do quite like is its accord with labdanum. And you'll be interested to know that veramos is also naturally found inside of labdanum. So potentially that's one of the reasons that they go well together. But this is just something I discovered, possibly because these are two of my kind of favorite um, base notes, so it makes sense to kind of put them together. But they both have this kind of, um, at least to my nose, this kind of um, incense-like or kind of mystical quality to them. And when you put them together, it just makes a it just makes a nice smell. Um, I would try it yourself and see what you think. Maybe you agree with me, maybe you don't. Now again, this combination in a perfume, you do have to be careful with it because it can also make it smell a little bit papery depending on what other things are in there. So it's just something to experiment with. Now, I also remember when I did the podcast with Sarah McCartney a few months ago, she said that her Rock Pool Accord is actually doing a 50-50 blend of Veramos and Calon. So if you're interested in making a Rock Pool Accord or some kind of aquatic fragrance, then you could also try out that one as well. Finally, what I will say is often you need way less of this stuff than you may think. When I was a beginner, I was putting loads of this stuff in my perfumes, but often they were ending up quite cloying and powdery and I was wondering why and it was because of the amount of this stuff that I was putting in. Now don't get me wrong you can go and overdose it like Baccarat Rouge you probably will end up with a perfume that lasts for ages and projects a lot and smells like an absolute monster. If you want that kind of thing that's fine but I do find for general usage often um, just a tiny tiny amount of this goes a long way so instead of say using a usual 10% dilution you might want to drop down to a 1% dilution instead. At the end of the day it just depends on your tastes and preferences as well as the actual perfume you're using it in. In some perfumes it will work better to use an overdose whereas in others it might overpower it completely. So this is a raw material that I recommend to all of you beginners out there who don't currently have it. I recommend picking up some of this stuff and seeing what you can do with it because it's a very useful addition to your palette and I think you'll be able to go a long way with it. So yeah, that's it about Evanil. If you like this video just focusing on one raw material then do let me know in the comments because I'll try to do some more similar to this. Other than that, thank you for watching and consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel if you wanna see more videos like this.